Welcome back. On Wednesday, Minister of Energy and Transport Jobeth Kobe Davis announced the launch of a request for a proposal of Family Island energy generation via microgrids, clean fuels, and renewables. Minister Kobe Davis says the proposal aims to provide Family Islands with better and more affordable electricity after their ongoing complaints regarding the constant power outages in recent times. We invite independent power producers projects to propose a comprehensive microgrid solution comprising approximately 25 megawatts of renewable energy and additional 90 megawatts of prime power generation. This innovative approach aims to deliver electricity to our family islands, ensuring a cleaner, more reliable and cost effective energy system than our current framework. Minister Kobe Davis called the transition to cleaner fuels crucial, especially considering climate change concerns. She describes the implementation of the microgrid project. Madam Speaker, in collaboration with Bahamas Power and Light Company, BPL, this government is taking proactive steps to explore responsible energy generation and usage within our domestic energy sector. We understand that each island has unique requirements, loads, and generation levels. Therefore, the specification for the solar array will be at least 30% of the total installed generation on islands in cases where the current generation is sufficiently serving island loads. Minister Colby Davis also explains the management of the upcoming microgrid projects, emphasizing Bahamian management and the necessity of a committed collaboration with the Bahamas. Madam Speaker, these projects will be managed locally minimizing wastage, reducing generation costs, and ultimately driving each island involved towards the goal of self-sustainability. To ensure the success of these projects, a central microgrid controller will be employed across all microgrids around the family islands. This will improve efficiency, maximize savings, and increase the reliability by alerting Bahamas Power and Light company of any outages or changes to the system almost immediately. Almost immediately, the energy minister notes that the request for proposal focuses on the need of independence for family islanders and renewable energy production. The request for proposal includes a renewable energy project for multiple systems on family islands, including Abaco, Andros, Bimini, Eleuthera, Exuma, and Long Island. There was great anticipation leading up to Wednesday's session in the House of Assembly as Kingsley Smith, the newly elected member of Parliament for West Grand Bahama and Bimini, was officially sworn in after his and the PLP's by-election victory on November 22nd. Following the swearing-in and welcoming comments, Mr. Smith took his seat on the back bench next to Leroy Major, the PLP member for Southern Shores. He then rose to make his very first communication in the House of Assembly, saying that the moment is not about him, but the collective hopes and dreams of the people of West Grand Bahama and Bimini. As for his by-election victory and the repercussions following, especially for the official opposition that has been dealing with a leadership power struggle, Mr. Smith had this to say. Madam Speaker, while I take no pleasure in the uncertainty this victory may have caused in the leadership ranks of the opposition, it is a poignant reminder of the duty and rigor of our democracy. In this arena, we face the consequences of our actions. You throw in, you throw in jabs early. <laughs> be it as winners, be it as winners or losers, it is the democratic process that keeps us accountable, ensuring that we constantly strive to meet the high expectations of those we serve. I offer my respects to all candidates who participated in this election. Their contributions are vital to the vibrancy of our democracy. However, as we move forward, I am compelled to apologize if our victory has caused a stir on the other side. It was never about personal gain, but about fulfilling the collective aspirations of our people. Following the by-election loss, some members of the Free National Movement have called for an immediate convention to determine if party leader Michael Pintard commands the support of a majority of members in the party. Meanwhile, as for Mr. Smith, it is unclear at this stage if he will be assigned to a cabinet post, parliamentary secretary position, or chairman of a government corporation in the very near future. There has seemingly been an ongoing power struggle in the hierarchy of the Free National Movement with the intensity reaching a boiling point following the failed West Grand Bahama and Bimini election. 
Detractors of party leader Michael Pintar look to force a convention where it is believed former leader Dr. Hewitt Minnis will challenge Mr. Pintar for the leadership of the party. On Wednesday, while at the groundbreaking for the legendary marina in southeast New Providence, Prime Minister Philip Davis was asked to share his thoughts on the current infighting in the free national movement. Well, you know, that's, I don't get in other people's business, <laughs> but, uh, but I just, I'll just remind them of the admonition given to the House of Assembly yesterday in our, by our chaplain that a house divided could never stand. And I don't think that means success if they're divided. PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell on Wednesday also shared his thoughts on the FNM saga, describing a letter by former Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister to the FNM Council and to their leader as unwise from a political standpoint. What do you think was going through the head and mind of the FNM's former Deputy Prime Minister Desmond Bannister when he published an open letter to his party leader Michael Pintard calling for the party to have a convention? When you read the letter, you can see the deep divisions and anger within the party of the FNM. The PLP never disintegrated into that point of acrimony amongst its elites and remained together. You know, when you reach the point where you have to be writing a letter to get the attention of your leader, uh, you know something is terribly wrong. What prevents you from simply picking up the phone and conveying what your request is? Instead, the former Deputy Prime Minister engaged in a public rant and public invective, accusing the party leadership of supporting violence against one of its members. It wasn't even 24 hours before another FNM fired back with devastating directness at the letter. The FNM should know better. They went down this road before in 1977, and the PLP wiped the mat with them, pindling one big time in 1977. Well, I'm enjoying the popcorn, so it don't matter to me, but Bannister has led it to make no political sense whatsoever. Meanwhile, on Wednesday, while responding to reporters outside the House of Assembly, Mr. Pintard suggested he has a majority support in the FNM, as there have been no formal opposition to his leadership presented to the party's central council. He said the FNM will have a convention between February and October of 2024. And finally, the legendary Marina and Yacht Club held its groundbreaking ceremony on Wednesday at its state-of-the-art marina on the southernmost tip of Fox Hill Road, that's in the southeastern district of New Providence, with hopes of opening in 2025. Prime Minister Philip Davis says the marina will ensure the safety of aquatic vessels, especially during hurricanes, and create new opportunities for Bahamian people. We'll incorporate a qualified storage facility guaranteeing peace of mind in both local and international festivals. Over, over 200 career opportunities that will be created for qualified behaviors in the realm of construction, hospitality, and marine services. The nautical element of our tourism model cannot be overlooked. And so I'm encouraged by the investor confidence and contextual sensitivity demonstrated by this committed category of developers. It is truly my hope that upon completion, this marina will contribute toward the Bahamas becoming a regional lighthouse for marine services, satisfying not only national, but regional and global needs. Founder of Legendary Marina and Chairman of the Board, Peter Boss, highlights the strategic structure of the marina and surrounding buildings. Right now we're basically budgeting at 700 plus boats in the barn, dry storage. And it's important to point out, and it's really important in articles and people understand, insurance is hard to come by, and particularly now in named storms. They can actually have the right to cancel it during named storms. And that's going to get worse, not going to get better, according to the Insurance Commission. And what we do is we're, we're basically building a building that can withstand 185 mile an hour winds. That is basically a mid-range of a Cat 5 hurricane. And, you know, if we get above that, we all got a problem. But that, that is certainly going to satisfy the person that owns a house as it needs a boat. They've got a fortune invested in that boat. And it's uh, without a good hurricane plan, without a place to go. And that's not parking it up on the dry and never washed away. It's, uh, it really needs to be safe and in a building. The legendary Marina and Yacht Club is expected to be a new home to both residential and foreign boat owners. And that'll do it for your JCN Evening News. Once again, I'm Jarino Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. This segment of the news has been brought to you by Sun Oil Limited.